Did you miss me? Well, I everyone knew I think Blood Rain in those in those days, right? Like in the early 2000s. And yeah, because it was like a full-on 3D action game starring a badass vampire lady or Dom So, you know, it's very different. Um, and, you know, Blood Rain was published by Majesco. And before that, we had done Boyness Blob with Majesco. So in a lot of ways, Blood Rain was like a, it felt like a sequel to Boy in His Blob, kind of. Well, I mean, it was a, it's like a side-scrolling game that had animated characters. And so, in a way, it felt like a totally natural progression from what we were working on, even though like the game projects and the tone and everything was like very, very different. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was excited. I was excited to be making a game for Xbox Live and for PlayStation Network, right? Because this was our first XBLA PSN game. We were used to making stuff on the Wii and we were used to making like handheld, which I, I, mean, I love for handhelds and I love the Wii, um, but like being able to do something a little bit mature and something uh, that had the HD resolution and um, something with a little bit more of an edge. I mean, it was just a really cool project to have. And at WayForward, we were doing stuff, yeah, like going this blob. And there was a Batman for the Wii, Batman the Brave and the Bold. So it's like all that, all that cartoon stuff was all percolating. And so, but yeah, so that's how this rain project all kind of fit in there. But it was definitely a tonal shift to go from Boy and His Blob to Blood Rain. Uh, we wanted to make a, a Blood Rain game that was like a little bit more, not necessarily like kid friendly, but something that was a little bit like less NC-17. It was still like very different. And also like making a combat system was really interesting. Like for uh, for Batman, we had done a combat system, but like this... this Blood Rain combat system was much more involved, and uh, being able to work on something like that, and something that was a combat platformer combo, it was just like, it was such a dream, it was just like a really cool project, and we had never had the chance to do something like that, so yeah, it was exciting. I mean, we wanted to make Rain's abilities more more suitable for her as a Dom Thier, right? So it's like she would suck blood to regain health, and then she could she could suck the enemy's blood and infect them, and then use that to like make chain combos. Um, we didn't want we didn't want sucking blood to just be a uh, just a health recovery mechanic. So we tried to like integrate it into the gameplay more, and we tried to like really have her use her mobility and her melee and her guns all in conjunction with one another as she progressed throughout these levels. So that was like our big, those were our big goals. At that time, I think I was very into making, into making like those moments, right? Those magical moments that you would, that where you would stop and take a breather or where, I mean, that Rain is supposed to be this character that is a crazy dompier in a frenzy of action. Um, but then also we wanted to give her like some degree of, of refinement or elegance as shown by her sipping a rain glass and, and not destroying everybody. Uh, yeah, or, you know, so another funny thing um, is when rain is when, when rain falls and, and Raven like transforms and catches her, which is like exactly the same as Shovel Knight catching Shield Knight. Um, you know, like it's just like a hundred percent like the same thing, and like those and those uh, or like the sign knives are also the sign knives. The the knives, the sign pattern became a staple for all future games that we worked on together. Like Double Dragon Neon has knives that shoot, um, and and Shovel Knight has sign knives, and Nina the Hollower will have sign knives as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, I guess we would try to make moments like that. And that was a big thing that we did at Wake Forward too, right? Like what are the, what are the moments that are going to sell the game? Big explosive moments like Entra with the alien comes out over the thing and stabs it, you know, it's like that kind of stuff. Or the quiet moments like the boy and blob like hugging or like the boy and blob in silhouette. We, we were big on silhouette, right? We got to put the silhouette part in everything where they're walking in the mood and silhouette or rain is walking in silhouette. In the Ami do silhouette. They're silhouette and they all. 
fighting games. And then Inspector Knight, um, you know, there's like a flashing lightning part. Oh, oh, and there's a silhouette at the end, right? At the very end, before you, go, before you go to black, at the most pivotal climactic moment of the game. It's all just in black, right? Because that's, because that's, yeah, because I'll follow the pattern. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess so. And also, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take credit for those ideas because I'm not even sure if those were mine. I feel like we brainstormed all of those, and it all, well, and it all, you know, things happened on the whiteboard, and people would joke about everything. And I mean, that it was that magic of working together and joking and having idea and thinking what would be like the coolest badass over the top thing for rain to do um all of that stuff is what is what made those moments happen blood rain betrayal as a side-scrolling platformer where you're trying to be like a cool vampire seems so much like specter of torment to me um and like specter knight can run up the walls and do wall jumps and like rain can do wall jumps and uh they both have they both have like a lot of the same well this, this is a good this is a perfect example and it's funny is that specter knight sits on that you know, he sits on that gravestone overlooking the moon in that quiet moment of, I mean, that's the exact thing that you were talking about. But yeah, lots of things, definitely lots of things in common with Spectre of Torment. Um, yeah, the sign knives is definitely part of it. I mean, Double Dragon Neon is so much like King of Cards and all of the, all of like that goofiness of Batman, Brave and the Bold. Like, oh yeah, I would say a lot of that, like a lot of that humor and like snappiness rubbed off on us when we ended up doing uh, Double Dragon Neon and Shovel Knight later. Like Shovel Knight and Batman definitely have a lot in common. Yeah, I mean, everything with Mina, right? But so everything that's old is new again. Um, and a lot of that a lot of that darkness and that creepiness that we brought in and a lot of the scary uh, a lot of the scary ideas, but also like the subtle imagery of the chillness, I would say is, uh, is that's also gonna be brought along in Mina. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I guess everything really is kind of like an iteration uh, on the previous thing, but each one is pulled in a different direction uh, and is like a different variation on the on the thematics as well. We're still trying to take that same tact of making great games that are design first and carrying those gameplay ideas through until we have arrived at whatever we've arrived at. For Blood Rain, it was to make like a, a crazy hack and slash platformer that's tough as nails where you can drink blood, blow people up and, and shoot them and, and slice them up and, uh, and everything that we, everything that we worked on when we were making that game from the, from the, dark visuals to working really hard on the blood vfx i still remember like when Tr she, she sucks the blood and it was only like single pixels that were coming out at first but like in the fluid dynamics uh in the animation but everyone was just looking at the monitor like whoa this is gonna be so cool the blood's like down here and so it's like from just like taking taking all those different uh tacks um and trying to make something that was that was very uh that was just trying to go towards a goal i mean same thing that's like what we were trying to do with shovel knight we wanted to make like an 8-bit game that was built around a, a mechanic that we thought was exciting that was in the style of the game that we loved uh and all of our decisions we we worked towards achieving that goal um so yeah the more that we i feel like the the more that we all work on games together uh and the more and I, I mean, heck, I'm still working with, you know, with several, with several of these people today. So yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the Blood Rain Betrayal staff ended up becoming yacht clubbers as well. I mean, we were like trying to make a hard game. I mean, we definitely did it. Uh, it was interesting because I think we sort of like relied on the mechanics when you grab it enemy and you like can suck their health and get your health back. We sort of like relied on that. To be like the modifier, the difficulty, and I think where we like for a lot of people we found was like the platforming where you like didn't provide that avenue. That I mean that's like often how we were thinking about it was I think was just like we can make it tougher and if we need to there's like that that like uh, valve we can like pull to make it more possible for players, or players can like use that more than they need to. 
I mean, we were really inspired by the kind of like uh, Double May Cry's band it is like of the time period, and uh, like having these like ranking systems was like a huge part of those. <laughs> so I mean, it was like, yeah, really thinking about like how do we make it the kind of game where that's like a huge component of it too. At, uh, Blood Rain, I had spe like I just came off doing a bunch of DS games in a row, so it was really stark and like one of the first things I was working on was like we're having blood spatter all over the place, right? And like it's using physics, and it's just like not in a million years would that happen on the DS. <laughs> I felt like I could do anything I wanted to do, you know. I think that was good for like the kind of game or like the franchise too which is like it's very like over the top and you know uh campy or whateverness of it that like vampires are like associated with is like you can like you can tap into that really easily you have this framework which you're operating out of right and you're like making decisions based on that um and you know it's like we're trying to mash like Blood Rain franchise with with like 2D Brawler uh, and uh, I don't, I don't know, our like w wacky sensibilities. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, for me, it's like bringing as much to the idea as I can from like my point of view, you know, for like, uh, and I guess at the end of the day, it means like making it as fun as possible. Um, so like, I don't know, it's like, here's a, here's a boss, it's gonna have these four attacks, and I'm thinking about like, how to string those together in an interesting way, or like, or how, you know, well, what happens if Rain is on this side of the screen, and like, you know, I want to make sure she's like, always gonna, you know, be in danger, and, you know, just making sure that, um, like, the designs that are like, put forth, I can like, you know, bring creativity into, you know, the implementation of them. Um, in, a, in a lot of ways, too, I feel like Blood Rain was, like, felt like a project that was, like, and, uh, but it felt like, it felt like, oh, we're, like, we're, like, starting to make something that's, like, real, like, is, people are gonna, like, like this kind of thing. It felt like we like started to figure out what we were doing, and I think Double Dragon Eon was like, you know, the next step of like, okay, we like we actually know what we're doing, and then and then when we made Shovel Knight, it's like, yeah, now we're actually like applying all the knowings, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with like a time schedule that's not, you know, two months. Because it was a 2D side scroller, I didn't want to do the style of music that was in the original. It was an awesome soundtrack. Both one and two had amazing music. They were kind of like it was a product of its time, but it's ambient, like dark. It had that like perfect dark ambience in there. With this, with a move to more of a beat 'em up, like a slash 'em up. Sean, uh, he said to me, "I want, I want this to sound like, like Luca Turilli of like he's like a neoclassical composer, songwriter, metal guy. It's he sounds like Blood Rain sounds basically, but." how am I going to do this on a game soundtrack where I have like a few months to work on it? Um, so I had to go crazy. Basically I, I went, I went a little overboard. Uh, I learned a lot of guitar solos and stuff. Yeah, it's probably dusk falls. That was the first one that I, uh, that I came up with. It was basically the first idea that I had that I wrote down was for the, the, pre the piano uh, arpeggio prelude in uh, Dusk Falls, the very beginning of that song, and the choir is in there and stuff. I, I was hearing it in my head. When I say I like every kind of music, I'm not just posturing or saying except country or except hip hop or except whatever the hate, hate du jour is. I really like everything. Like any kind of music that people are into, I'm fascinated by the fact that people jam out to it. Like, the fact that people are going to dance to something or consider it their jam or like play it at their wedding or that's so powerful to me and the fact that people are into different genres i want to know why sociologically why uh, culturally why like what's the history of it who are the luminaries in the field 
So, uh, but yeah, basically, multitudes are a natural part of my listening and intake experience, and my whole my love for music is all the types. And so I, I, I like to mix it up. I like to jump from, to give it dynamic range, to jump from the highs to the lows, have a real soft piece. That, I mean, it's not just those three games, Shantae levels that are spooky themed, like, entire entire other soundtracks that are in that vein. I've done a lot of Castlevania music over the years. <laughs> it's the spooky, macabre, bach rock. Basically, I try to set a limit on some element of it so that it's not the same as every other job. In the case of Blood Rain, it was no pipe organs, no time. Zero. No pipe organs in this. We're not Toccata and Fugue in D minor. We're not going to go there. We're not Phantom of the Opera. Because everything else is pipe organ and it's just going to straight up be Castlevania if you do organs. So I went with like choirs instead. And, you know, there were there are elements in there that are, you know, that have that gothic y feel, uh, neoclassical elements, but there's no pipe organs. Um, and there are none in Spectre of Torment either because it's Nintendo. You, who knows what any of those instruments are? It's just, it's beeps. Um, except when they're obviously violins or something. But, um, so I've never used pipe organs in a Castlevania track other than a, an occasional Shantae Labyrinth. So I'm good to go on Mina. It's going to be organy as heck. And that changes the whole tone of the game. It makes it sound like Phantom of the Opera versus uh, Scary Time. I mean, I guess as a game developer, I measure my, I measure my life in like games, right? It's like, well, that was so many games ago. We worked on that so many. It's like, sit after Blood Rain, it was Double Dragon, and then like those Mighty games, and that was all before Shovel Knight, and then we've made half a dozen Shovel Knights. Now all this new, and now and now new stuff, and now Mina. It's just like, uh, yeah, and there's right, and everything, and everything has echoes, right? Like Mina has echoes of Blood Rain. It's a blast. Blast of blood.